Now, Jake and I, uh, we usually get there before everybody else. We bring everything into uh, Baldwin's Gymnasium, and then we break out into two separate teams. Uh, Jake sets up the announcer setup while I go over and set up the network side of things. <laughs> I will take over the press box side, quote unquote, press box. It is our courtside table that we have our two announcers, Austin and Tyler, set up at. And from there is our kind of our main hub where all the equipment goes back into place. We run our main fiber optic trunk cable runs back into there. Our fiber for our main camera runs back. Our fiber for the two wireless courtside cameras come into there. And audio all stems from that system too and all goes back into the trailer from there. So part of the setup looks like setting up the tablecloth, table. We have a monitor there for our announcers to look at program feeds so they can watch replays and see what we're showing to the broadcast on air. Each side of the table we have a wireless receiver which takes in the wireless feed from our courtside cameras which we have one position underneath of each hoop. All of our audio is done right there in the press box breakout. The announcers have each a headset they wear, they, their audio goes into an XLR over fiber system, and then they get return audio from inside of the truck, whether they hear, hear the producer talking, and they can hear themselves. Main camera is pretty self-explanatory, just center, center court up on the top of the bleachers. We're excited to have the Blackmagic Ursa as our main camera this year. Basically that just gets a Blackmagic A10 box sends the fiber down underneath of the bleachers and we feed it back out through down the floor side under the table and I plug that in as our main camera fiber run. My name is Evan Lorenz and I'm a wireless courtside camera operator. My rule for the setup includes getting all of the fibers, uncoiling them, and putting them to their respective positions. This includes the sky cam, which is located uh, high up on the gym, uh, getting a ladder and going up to get it off the ledge, uncoil it and bring it down to run it under the bleachers. And also, I have to get the main camera fiber as well as the big fiber spool and run it from inside the gym out through the, the hallway into the trailer. This can be a bit tricky when you're going under the gym bleachers because it is dark under there and there's also risk of debris, garbage, anything that might get caught on or you could trip on. And uh, something that we have to communicate with each other is being on one side of the bleachers while the other person is under the bleachers and you have to feed the cables through, feed the wires underneath the bleachers and you know lining up where the person is. And again, you don't want to force the cables under the bleachers because it can be a little bit tight. So it's best to work it slowly and get it through smoothly. All right, I got it. That's good, thank you. And what's new about tonight is the slash camera, which was a really cool introduction um, to a new angle of the broadcast, which I hope we get to use more often. We take that shot um, if they score, uh, we take that shot then. It just adds a lot more to the featurette and it's super duper cool. So once all that's set up, um, I do a quick little test with our Dactronics to make sure the AllSport 5000 can communicate with our AllSport CG. And then once I see the handshake done, I hop into the trailer. Then we start getting things turned on inside the trailer. Once everything inside of the gymnasium is set up, we head outside of the trailer and that's where we plug in our MTP fiber cable to the patch panel, which gives us all of our cameras, audio, internet, and anything else we send back and forth. Now it's time to head inside of the trailer and we just finished last minute preparations. We make sure we have all of our inputs, everything's working. We go through replay footage and make sure all of our scenes are labeled correctly in playlists. Uh, from there, we also do a final show rundown. We will have basically run through graphics again, make sure everything's good to go, everybody's on the same page. And then we kinda all hang out, grab dinner real quick, and then we head to the production meeting. Uh, welcome to the game today. I am Tyler, uh, not Tyler Zeman, the other Tyler. I'm gonna be filling in today on the scene. You need to check? Is it good just to do it like this here? 
During our pregame segment, we'd like to get a coach interview uh, with the head coach of the basketball team, and we record that well in advance of the game so we can have that on our replay system and come back to it and treat it as it's live. Uh, Austin and the guys will record that, and then we just take that into the replay system and have the ability to play it right back as if it's live. Everybody else, it's Baldwin and Upper St. Clair, a battle between two teams at 3 and one in section play. Here with that coach, Jeff Ackerman. So, coach. So we run the pregame interview with the coach. Usually do it when there's doubleheader nights, girls playing at 6 o'clock and the boys playing at 7.30. Typically film it during halftime of the girls basketball game or when there's a standalone game, just the boys playing, able to film it during halftime of the JV game. It goes a little bit smoother and isn't as big of a rush as when the girls are playing. So three questions, ask the coach's feelings about the previous game and the game at hand. Pre game's different for everything today. I'm going to basically do the first half about the last game and then the records. And then we're going to do a break, and out of the break, we're going to do the courtside interview with Ethan. So you have some time. You probably have like three to four minutes after being live. Now we're back in the trailer, moments before the broadcast starts. Uh, we basically do our final mic checks, make sure everything's good to go. And from there, we start the broadcast. If you mess up, you're fired. Probably Austin's going to be like, Why is there 30 <laughs> guys with the truck working and none of you can do anything? Happy. Tyler's filling out the. Yeah, that's lineups. fine. We're going to wait. We're going to just go with the starting soon graphic. All right, going live. All right, um, free game long. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Start recording up there. Let's bring up the drill in the room right now. Are you ready? All right, everybody, here we go. Standby audio fade. All right, fading audio. Going theme. Go drone. And go Austin. It's a battle between two of the top teams in Section 2 of 6A with sole possession like of second four. place on the line with the Upper St. Clair Panthers in town to face the Baldwin Fighting Islanders Tuesday night action all live at Baldwin High School. You're on the Fighting Islanders Sports Network. Lower third. 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 We'll be right back in just a few moments Stand and hear from Hickos Jeff yeah. Ackerman here on the Fighting Islanders Sports Network. And go to. At Ooh Pizza Baldwin. And go wide. And go Austin. And go. Stand by matchups. Drive. Baldwin and Upper St. Clair, a battle of two teams at 3 and 1 in section play. Fighting Islanders at 8 and 5 overall. Upper St. Clair at 8 and 6. It has not been smooth sailing for Baldwin in recent years against the Panthers. During the broadcast, I'm playing the rule producer, which means I am producing the broadcast. Basically, everything you see is my stamp of approval or decision comes through me. Uh, camera shots is more the director, but like content, what we play when, when we go to commercial, it's kind of all coming down from me. So I am. I have a couple different lists and sheets I'm sorting through to look look at and decide what we're going to run when. There's a couple little mini graphics we like to run to have the announcers introduce themselves. There's a couple different spots we have our wireless courtside reporter and I'll try to coordinate with our announcers when he's going to have a chance to speak. This is without a doubt the biggest game of the season for the Fighting Hollanders going up against one of the rivals and up for St. This year we were able to finally reveal our new courtside reporter which is Ethan Coulihan, and he gives us valuable little updates and reports from around the gymnasium. He'll sit behind some of the benches, um, and then he, can, he has direct contact with the announcers. He can hear the program feed in his ears, so whenever Austin or Tyler send it to him, he can respond, and they can pretty much have a full conversation back and forth. Um, it's a fun new addition. Uh, definitely adds a lot more insight from the journalistic broadcast side of things. You can have another opinion from a guy who's across the gym and maybe sees something that Austin and Tyler don't see. So. Working with our sideline reporter Ethan is pretty cool. We're like a team. You know, we're always by each other usually during the game. Um, if there's ever a toss to Ethan, I'll look around, see where he's at. He'll give me the thumbs up. And with getting interviews too, we always keep Keep an ear out for, okay, who's going to be the player of the game? Where are we going to go to afterwards? What number are we looking for to grab to get him over to get an interview with uh, Ethan? So, I don't know, you always have to be on the same page with your courtside sideline reporter so that, you know, the pregame, halftime, and postgame, 
go well. Most directors will queue up the camera shot and then call it. But because I'm looking at every shot, I tend to just give a little breathing room to all the camera people and then take it. You gotta keep your eyes on every camera and try to find something you can actually switch to. And that's probably the most difficult thing about the position is making sure you have something for people to look at. Probably one of my favorite cameras that we used um, throughout the entire season is our sky camera. It gets mounted up into the corner of the gym and we take that shot for any openings or closings or whenever we come back from commercial just to remind people where we are and what we're doing. So one of my favorite graphics for basketball is actually our starting lineups because what we're doing this year is we're having the announcers work on those graphics instead of us doing it in the trailer. So essentially what they can do is they can log on to the graphics site, change the names of the starting lineups and it'll be loaded in into OBS. So we pair this up with the sky camera and we share player stats on top of that beautiful sky camera. The last role I played during the broadcast is a replay operator. Uh, we have four inputs going into our new tech three play system. Uh, those are the two wireless cameras underneath of each hoop, our main camera, and sometimes either our PTZ camera or for this broadcast tonight is our new slash camera which we have positioned behind the scorers table and that gives us a nice close reaction shot after somebody scores. Now I'm constantly making an endpoint for when they shoot the ball. If it's a good replay it'll be the endpoints marked and then they throw the ball, the play happens, go through the net and then make an out point and if we have time or some fouls called we will quickly go back to that replay and play it back at like 75 percent speed. Basketball is a lot different than football because it's constant back and forth motion. So you, you really have to have your eyes tuned to the screen and follow. You're, you're mainly looking at each of the wireless camera to see if it's going, the action's going towards each side. And from there, you're just marking your endpoints, in and out points, and categorizing everything into playlists. During the game, I sit under the hoop with the camera and I'm on the side where Baldwin is shooting towards, so I get the highlights there. Um, you know, get close ups of the ball getting shot through the hoop, uh, player reactions, penalties if possible. Basketball is a lot faster paced than football, where there's not much time in between each, each play or each uh, big moment, so you got to keep the camera going on the action and there's a little bit of time where you could get the coach on the sideline or like I said player interactions with the coach or some penalty or if there's an injury but most of the time with basketball it's boom 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 it's not like football where there's you know the, the play clock in between each play. I like running this camera because you could get creative shots you can help build the story of the broadcasts like you got to know what's going on in the moment it's funny to see Fun, funny to see some reactions from the student section, from the coaches, players. Uh, if there's a coach yelling at a ref, you know, just like football, it's fun to get that on the broadcast. You know, there are times where you ask the student section to get rowdy, get pumped up, and there could be co some cool shots there. Uh, also just, yeah, in general, the creative shots, the, um, yeah, the interactions, and following the ball is pretty cool too. Following getting a close-up of it going through the hoop. Um, those can be some cool shots there too. One of the amazing things about being a broadcast team is the ability to give people new opportunities. And one of the opportunities that we opened up this year was student internships. So we give students the opportunity to shadow us, uh, whether it be inside the trailer or out on the field, to strengthen their interest in broadcasting and video production. And it has been amazing having these students on our team, uh, getting them ready for the future. I think it's a really great opportunity for many of these students to get this opportunity. I know when I was in school, there was the video club, video classes, but you didn't really get hands-on opportunities like this to be in, in the work field. Um, it offers a great variety of jobs, roles, and if anyone wants to get into anything like this in the future, it gives them a taste of what they're getting into. Um, I think it's really great that, you know, it isn't, you know, to start here, start with high school sports and then they're working in their own, uh, 
you know, working at their own high school. Not many students can really say that they got this kind of experience working right down the hall from them, where they're going to classes. Um, also, when they look at you and your role, uh, that's always a that's always a responsibility you have to take too to be, you know, mature, responsible, everything that you'd want out of a, a mentor role. Whether it be the employees that have been here a while or the interns, you know, what makes this crew uh, function is the teamwork. Whether it be setup, game or post game, you know, everything has to be working in unison. We have to be talking on unity and we have to be on the same page with a lot of things. And that starts with chemistry, you know, getting everyone communicating well with each other. Um, and again, like I mentioned with welcoming new team members you got to show that hey we're we're a welcoming crew and you know we, we work together well there's never any you know talk down to anyone or and there's no lack of communication on the polar opposite side of it we work pretty well uh you know with both sports football and basketball so uh, over time you build that chemistry with each other during the team you know starting the season you might not be on the same page but by the end you kind of get that rhythm you got to get that um, formula for how to work and how the broadcast functions. With the amazing team that we have, uh, we pack up fairly quickly and then it's time for us to roll out. So.